Hemigramus is genus of freshwater tetra from South America that's fairly common in the aquarium hobby. However, not all the species of this family are scientifically described, and today we'll be talking about one of them. Hemigramus species Morsecote is small, but very interesting and unique tetra. I've spent weeks trying to find any deeper research or scientific article about this fish, however without any luck and the data that are available are basically limited to only location this unique fish is from. So let's begin with where this fish got its name from. When we take a closer look to the body coloration, it has almost transparent body with some gold coloration in the head and around the belly. Fins of this fish have some nice black and yellow details and towards the rear part of the fish we can see the main marking three very bright lines. Usually first and the last line are very short and the middle one is always the longest, reminding the Morse code and it is exactly where the name of this species comes from. Their behavior is also super interesting. Instead of typical schooling and super active behavior of other species in this family, these guys are not that active swimmers. Most of the time they are staying at the same place while actively making super fast movements with all of their fins. Even these movements seems like they are trying to do more scout with their little fins and some people assume that it may be even the way of communicating with each other and the frequency of these fast movements is changing for example when they sense danger, however this is only assumption that has not been tested yet. Their feeding habits are also really cool. They usually have their own place somewhere around the tank and spend majority of time in the cover of hardscape or plants, staying at the same place and striking on any small creatures or even dried food swimming around. They are omnivore fish, meaning that they will eat any small life, frozen or dried food, which they can fit in their relatively small mouth. However, from my experience they prefer life and moving foods the most, like for example life Daphnia, and as I've mentioned earlier they only strike to the food moving around them. Once the food falls to the substrate you will never see them picking it up, and they also won't swim up to the top to grab food from the water surface. It's therefore great to have a little bit of water movement in the aquarium, which will spread the food around and make the feeding easier. In the aquariums they do great in slightly harder water, however they do require soft water for breeding. We can assume that as other tetra species in this family, females are rounder and bigger than males. There is no evidence of nobody who ever bred these guys in captivity and also all the fish shops and wholesalers offering this fish that I found had them wild caught. I have some experience with breeding tetras and definitely will attempt it, so wish me luck. In case you have bred these guys before, please let me know in the comment section below, so I can give you credit for that in my upcoming videos. Morsco tetras are peaceful and super interesting addition, especially to planted aquariums. Their only disadvantage is their price. Usually price for a single one starts somewhere around 10 to 15 dollars, what's relatively expensive for such a small fish, and therefore majority of aquarists prefer a little bit cheaper species. They're only growing up to 3 cm and therefore it may be a little bit difficult to closely examine this fish by the eye, and therefore it's much better to use for example camera. As I've mentioned earlier at the beginning of this video, there is almost nothing we know about this species and therefore I'll continue observing and collecting data that I can share with you guys. I'm also planning to do a series of research experiments with these guys mostly focusing on flesh-like fast movements of their fins, their special behavior and I would also like to attempt to breed them.